shoulder dislocation, and the hill sex injury. Hill sex lesion is a dent in the back of the humeral head, which occurs during anterior shoulder dislocation, as the humeral head impacts against the front of the glenoid cavity of the scapula. This indentation of the posterior aspect of the humeral head occurs in up to 80% of the current anterior shoulder dislocations. When a hill sex lesion is identified, it's important to search and look for anterior glenoid rim and labrum pathology to identify a potential Bankert lesion. The labrum is a rim of cartilage that attaches around the edges of the glenoid. This glenoid labrum contributes to shoulder stability. At the shoulder dislocates, the humeral head may tear part of the labrum away from the glenoid. Injury of the anterior inferior glenoid labrum due to anterior shoulder dislocation is called a Bankert lesion. Bankert lesion usually can cause chronic instability of the shoulder and usually requires surgery. How big is the hill sex lesion? What is the size of hill sex lesion? The hill sex lesion can range from a small to a large indentation and the size of the lesion can affect the treatment given to the patient. The larger the hill sex lesion, the more likely the shoulder will be unstable and the more likely that shoulder will dislocate again and becomes a recurrent dislocation. The larger the hill sex lesion is, the more likely the glenoid labrum and the joint capsule have a significant tear. How about the x-rays? The defect may be missed on routine AP views. X-ray view is helpful for the subluxation or the dislocation. However, a combination of an AP view in internal rotation and a striker notch view will allow evaluation of the hill sex lesion that's present in the posterolateral aspect of the humeral head. You can see here how the striker notch view that will show the hill sex lesion is obtained. The patient is lying supine with the hand placed over the head and the beam is tilted 10 degrees cephalad and directed towards the coracoid. CT scan can be very helpful and the MRI is the procedure of choice for labral pathology. How about the treatment? Well, a small sized health sex lesion, which is less than 20%, usually treated non-operatively. Medium size hill sex lesion, the defect is usually more than 25%. It's really usually between 20 to 40%. You will do arthroscopic or open remplissage procedure. It may be performed in combination with Bankert repair. The defect is filled with the posterior capsule and the rotator cuff, usually the infraspinatus. When you have a large size hill sex lesion, which is rare, the lesion usually is greater than 40%, usually is filled with bone or metal. It should be noted that the normal humeral head has a bare area on its posterior aspect, and it should not be confused with a hill sex lesion. Hill sex lesion is not clinically significant unless the defect engages the glenoid. How about engaging hill sex lesion? When the lesion is large enough and the arm is an abduction and external rotation, the shoulder will dislocate and the anterior glenoid will engage the posterior part of the head. Some surgeons consider doing an open procedure with engaging hill sex lesion. What is the difference between hill sex lesion and reverse hill sex lesion? Hill sex lesion occurs with anterior dislocation of the shoulder. 
It is indentation on the posterior aspect of the humeral head following anterior shoulder dislocation. The posterior humeral head hits the anterior glenoid rim and fracture or indentation is created. Reverse head sex lesion is indentation of the anteromedial aspect of the humeral head following posterior shoulder dislocation. The anteromedial humeral head hits the posterior glenoid rim and a fracture or indentation is created. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that video.